I'm a very busy lady. <laughs> it's my pleasure to, to turn the evening over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, no. <laughs> so thank you all for, for being here. Um, we do have a wonderful, wonderful panel here with us. And for those of you, S SHRM is uh, Society of Human Resource Management. And uh, it's a lot of fun um, to be in that world. But, uh, you know, our purpose here today is to really talk about networking and how do we do it, how can we be effective, how can we get better at it. How many of you enjoy networking? Good. How many of you are fantastic at networking? All right. Okay. Okay. Excellent. We're going to pull the two of you up here. But, you know, we're going to have a, a great opportunity, and, and I'm, I'm holding off, you know, and in introducing this wonderful panel because I want you to pay attention to what we're going to be doing today. We are going to have, obviously, a panel discussion about networking and get some insight from these wonderful ladies here. We're going to build an elevator speech. How many of you have an elevator speech? Okay. All right. So we're going to build on what you either have or what you don't have and make it stronger, make it better, and have an opportunity to increase your, your, your success with networking. You're going to practice your elevator speech, so you'll actually have an opportunity to do that. We're going to do kind of a speed networking thing. And then we're going to talk at the end. We're going to have some feedback. You know, we want you to, you know, tell us, does this work? Doesn't it work? Did you like it? Didn't you like it? What opportunities we have? So any questions about that, about what we're going to do? All right, so we have here, and I'm going to start over here, April Audi, who uh, works with me at Penske. April, she's worked in the field of IT for over 30 years. She started, you know, not the one that I started. <laughs> <laughs> she is the director of corporate systems for our organization, Penske. She holds a bachelor's degree in uh, business management and a master's in information sciences. She's an elder in her church. She has three little Yorkies. Their names are... Sprout, Sprocket, and Sprite. <laughs> her hobbies are swimming, reading, singing, and ballroom dancing. So it's, it's definitely an honor to have her here. And I invited her here because, you know, she's in the IT field. She is kind of the nucleus of our organization, and she really um, connects with everyone within our organization and even externally as well. So um, it's an honor to have her here. Please give her a round of applause. We also have Andy Ditsky, who is a friend of mine, a fabulous, wonderful woman. Um, Andy is a graduate from the College of Notre Dame of Maryland um, with a degree in Communication Arts and English from, I'm sorry, Arts and English, and from Hood College with a master's in Human Sciences. She spent five years in college admissions, four years working part-time in a nonprofit as an executive direct, director of the Burks it, it, Decline, sorry, council, and a total of 12 years in pharmaceutical sales industry. And I am going to ask her to tell you the name of her company because my tongue gets all mixed up with it. I work for Barrier Ingelheim. It's a German company. It, it doesn't look like that on paper. <laughs> but she's currently a pharmaceutical sales rep and, and she's phenomenal. She's also a lacrosse coach, which today is her first uh, day of practice. Um, and so she will be leaving us a little early, but um, you know she's she's giving us her time right now. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs> Last but not least, we have here Regina Hampton. Um, she also works with me at Penske. She is a fantastic woman as well. Um, she graduated from Alvernia University with a bachelor's degree in accounting, business administration, and a master's in business administration with a concentration in HR. She currently works, obviously, with me at Penske <laughs> as the senior compensation analyst for the domestic and international logistics business. Uh, she finds networking is a core function of her role. Uh, she is Penske's United Way co-coordinator. She is also a committee member for the Opportunity House Super Bowl annual event. Did I say that right? And she is a miming director for her church. So. Here's Regina, please give her a round of applause. The beauty of this panel is that, uh, my, so my role is diversity and inclusion. So the beauty of this panel is, look at how diverse this, this panel is. We have a, a um, diverse panel in terms of, um, you know, roles, experience, um, background, ethnicity, 
Um, it's, it's just fantastic. And I think that that's so important because I want you to be able to take away from this experience the fact that no matter where you are in your life and your, you know, what level, et cetera, there's something to learn from everyone. And um, these ladies definitely have some great experience, again, with regard to networking. And so we're going to pick their brains. Um, we have some questions. If you have questions as we go along, feel free to just, you know, shout them out, raise your hand, or what have you. But I do want to make this interactive and not just kind of an interrogation of, of these ladies. So, um, you know, without further ado, um, I want to double check. You guys can hear me in the back? Yes. Okay. So um, let's talk about your professional background. Um, you know, with regard to networking and how you see networking fitting into what you do. Who'd like to get us started? I'll start with that. Okay. So I, networking to me is a core of my responsibility and I'll give you the background on that. I wouldn't have my job if I didn't network to get it. So I originally came to Penske as a senior accountant. So I was opening and closing the month and close, all that fun stuff. And I decided that I wanted something different. So I didn't, at the time, have the skill set to actually move into compensation. So I met with Delphia, who introduced me to the VP of Compensation, and I started networking and meeting with him to let him know that I was interested in this job. So when the opportunity came up, because I was kind of bothered him for about 18 months prior, <laughs> when, the, when the position came up, I was the first person he thought of because I had the initiative to let him know that I wanted to do compensation. The reason it's part of my core is I have to deal with people in different countries, different departments. And sometimes getting information that you need is not always the easiest. So I've found that if you have certain relationships with people, they're more likely to give you the information you need or introduce you or contact you with the person that will. Fantastic. Any questions for Regina? All right, any, um, would either of you like to offer any insight on that question? With my position being in IT, I meet with user departments all the time to understand the requirements of the project that we're going to be doing for them. So with that, there's always give and take on what we can do and the time frame and, and negotiation and things of that nature. So um, you really get to know the people in the organization and really I do meet with a lot of people and it's part of what I do as a big part of my job. So networking, getting along with people, being able to find common ground and work through issues, because it's not always smooth. IT sometimes does the glitches. Um, just trying to work through those issues with people and still come out on the other side as friends and um, you know, coworkers is really a niche that you have in this position. And so networking is really very fundamental to what I do every day. And the only thing I'll add is, you know, I, I have found that through, I've kind of had three careers now, and, um, <laughs> and, and I found that I, it was through networking college admissions. I didn't graduate from college and say, I want to be an admissions counselor or senior director of admissions. I um, saw there was a job opening at Mount St. Mary's, ended up telling some friends that I was looking at this job, and then somebody said to me, oh, I know the registrar at Mount St. Mary's. Let me connect you with him. So I went and sat with him, and then he recommended me for the job. So having that recommendation from him, because he was pretty influential at the time, really helped me. I had the interview anyway, but having that additional person to kind of back up my personality and my integrity really did help. And then I found, I, I did college admissions for five years at two different institutions. Kind of was ready to move on to something different. And had heard about pharmaceutical sales, but wasn't really sure how to break into pharmaceutical sales. And I answered this ad, and uh, it was for a part-time position. And I wasn't married, didn't have kids, wasn't ready to go part-time. But I did say to the manager, is there any way I can just meet you for coffee? I know you don't know me, I know you're probably busy. Could you meet me for coffee just to help me understand the industry? And she agreed. And she sat down with me, and we sat for like an hour, and she said, here are the in and outs, here's who you want to go with, here's who you don't want to go with, here's what you need to consider. And, um, and then the next time through, an ad came that I saw and answered, and that's how I ended up getting into pharmaceuticals. Because I at least had some working knowledge of what I needed to do and how the industry worked, so that when I went for that first interview, I wasn't completely shocked. Because the interview process for a pharmaceutical uh, is very different from any other interview process I've done. Um, so the techniques and the way they ask the questions. 
and um, so I was able to get into that. And in between pharmaceutical jobs, I did nonprofit, and um, I was four at home and was home with babies and uh, for four years. And at a casual function, um, my neighbor came up and introduced me to her dad, and her father said, "Oh, so what did you do?" I told him, and then he said to me, "You wouldn't have any interest in." Being, I mean, being a part-time executive director. You don't have any equine experience, do you? And I said, actually, I rode my entire life. And so it was just like, <laughs> you know, it was just one of those weird conversations that happened at the West Reading, you know, Art on the Avenue kind of fair. And the next thing I know, I'm interviewing for the executive director position. So, you know, it was just those, I guess every job, I've, career job I've had has been a result of just meeting just even a small connection and, and kind of furthering it. And so, you know, pretty much what you all said is that, you know, there's great benefit in networking. And, you know, at, at least in two examples, we see how the networking has proved to be successful with regard to career and um, gaining positions and moving forward. How many of you have networked your way into a position ever? Absolutely. Is it? Do you think that it would be would have been more difficult if you did not network to find those positions? <coughs> you know, going forward. So, you know, there are obviously benefits to networking and, you know, I'm gonna ask our panel if you could, you know, just spell out, and even though we all have an idea of it and we do it and we know what it's about, but from your perspectives, what is, if you could give us three great benefits of networking, what would they be? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> that you may not have thought about before. Um, I think it keeps you current in terms of what's going on either in that industry or um, in the world of what you're looking at. And the other thing is I just think it, it gives you more value because you can draw upon multiple resources if you need something or if you're, if you're contemplating something, you might be able to draw from this person in that and that person in that and get different perspectives on the same subject. Um, so that's what I would say. Great, wonderful. I have, well, opportunities was one of the things I had on my list as well, because you just never know who that connection may connect you to someone else and so on and so forth and, and really work in your life. I put down support um, when you're going through a rough time or, because we all go through rough times, let's face it, having a network of people and acquaintances that you can rely on to ask advice, opinions, that's important to have, you know, it's just that support that you build by learning people, getting to know people, and really figuring out who you can trust and, and so forth. And the new relationships. I think relationships are really important. I'm a people person, so I like to get to know people and build relationships with them. Um, so to me, having relationships and having that support structure in place for each other, you know, it goes both ways, is also very important, so. I know April and I, we've had many conversations in our offices where we just needed to decompress. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> She's so a support for <laughs> Take off the mask you had and decompress. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Anything? No. No. <laughs> you can still argue. You can still yeah. I will agree yeah. with what they with what they said. I will co I will co sign to their networking yes. and <laughs> so that being able to co-sign and having that information that you can use shamelessly mm -hmm. is a great reason for networking. <laughs> I will take it. Great. So when you think about networking, so we understand what the benefits are, what you know, why it's important. We know again that we all do it. Is there an optimal way to go about networking? So you know, if you were thinking about um, how you prepare to network and how you know you're going to an event, how do you prepare? for a networking experience? Well, the things I do, depending upon the audience, if you know the types of people that you're going to be networking for with, you can kind of prepare yourself. Um, for example, when I am at work, I spend a lot of time in meetings, as I said before, and at my level, many times it's with men. Um, so I prepare myself, because I don't really care about football or um, <laughs> some of the sports and those kinds of things all that much, but I prepare myself with other things that I can talk about, you know, well, 
how is your son or daughter? How is your you know, family doing? Um, what did you do over the weekend? And have open-ended questions that I can ask people because I have found, and I, I'm, hopefully you guys will agree with me, but most people really have no problem talking about themselves. So if you ask questions about how are you and what do you like and what are your hobbies and what things do you like to do, um, you're gonna get answers and then you'll start to build that connection as the answers that you receive might be something that you have in common. You know, so that's, that's kind of how I prepare for professional when it's something like tonight. Um, really, it's just a matter of talking and getting to know people and again, finding out about the people and understanding what is important to them and what things matter to them that helps you build those bridges to building a stronger relationship. Okay. So that's just kind of what I do. That works. That works. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, okay. I'll be honest. I've never prepared for networking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will agree with April. Most people like talking about themselves. So you normally just introduce yourself. And if it's a group of women, there's always something to talk about. If it's, you know, something small from shoes to purse, and then normally a conversation will start. Or a conversation with men, I love all sports, I've never had that issue. <laughs> to talk about. So. Another thing I'll add, I think it does depend on the context that you're walking into. So, you know, in, in corporate world, when I'm at a corporate meeting, usually after we've done the meetings, there's always some type of social event in the evening. Um, so oftentimes it's knowing if, if if I have a reason I need to like see somebody, like I know like, oh, I want to get into cardiology next. Well, then maybe I'm going to hone in on who I know the cardiology managers are in that meeting and go intentionally, you know, intentionally go up to introduce myself to them. So kind of knowing where I'm at and, and who the people are maybe I want to connect with um, or just so that they, so that I'm recognizable, just making sure that I go up to and introduce myself at least to the main players, if you will, that are in the room, uh, so they know who I am. Uh, you know, so if my name comes up in a meeting or up for a promotion, they can say, "Oh yes, I did meet her. She introduced herself at a meeting." Uh, and I just think too, open-ended questions are always best because they have to answer you. <laughs> so, it's not a yes, no. They have to say something. Um, so you can't go wrong with an open-ended question. Excellent, great. So you guys mentioned um, a couple of different things that I want to touch on, but particularly with regard to your setting. Is there a difference in terms of networking in a professional work environment versus, I'm going to stand in front of her now because she's making eyes at me, <laughs> versus a uh, social environment? What are your thoughts on that? Regina, would you like to share? I'm still feeling that <laughs> um, For me, I don't think there's a difference. I think you should be who you are regardless of where the situation is because people will appreciate that more and then you don't have to worry about should I say this should I not say this if you are who you are and you say something like you talk about what's comfortable to you it'll help the networking experience is my opinion I do too I think that you want to be genuine in who you are um, certainly the tone could be different at work if it's a, a very dry type of you know environment at work or something that you know everything's professional but I believe that you should still be yourself no matter what you just may change the topic or the way you're talking about the topic perhaps you know <laughs> then then what you may do outside of work environment but yeah perfect perfect so let's switch gears a little bit um, you know if we think about how long does it take to make an, an impression ten seconds, ten seconds. Generally, 30 seconds or less. Yeah. Absolutely. You have 30 seconds to make a good first impression. So how do you do that? What are some of the things that you do? How many of you feel, is it easy to make a good first impression? I hear, I see some, yeah. I see some, yeah. How many say it's easy? Give me a hand. Okay, about half. Okay. So what do you do? How do, what do you do? I see a hand back there. You hold eye contact. Not, not creepy eye contact, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Smile. You smile. Certainly be outweigh enough to introduce yourself. Take that initiative. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Anything else? A firm handshake. Firm handshake. 
Oh, that's a big one. How many of you got that kind of wimpy, wimpy thing? Or the guys who go in who seem to do this, that tends to be a lot, and I should, probably shouldn't have said that. Don't tell me. But they go in and they like literally crunch every bone. In oh. the and um, so, yeah, so there are some strong techniques to, to make a strong first impression within that first 30 seconds. If you don't make a strong impression within 30 seconds, what happens? Opportunity goes out the window, right? And how do you rebound from that? I ha this is an interesting fact. Um, it takes, if you make a bad first impression with someone, it takes 25 additional interactions that have to be positive in order to change the perspective. So can you imagine your first impression, not so good, going back to the person, hi, I'm Delphi again, hi. Hi, I'm Delphi again. 25 times. Hello, I'm Delphi again. <laughs> what are and that is difficult because first of all, we're all busy, right? We don't have time to, you know, try to change someone's perspective. If they don't, you know, get us the first time, we're kind of moving on. But the reality is, again, opportunity can be right out of the window. So, um, you know, we got some, some feedback from the group. Oh, yep. When you shake hands with somebody, and if, if you want to avoid having your fingers crushed, if you do a, a web to web, they can't get at you. Oh, okay, so there, we have a defense. <laughs> of not letting them you know get the upper hand so to speak and um, you know engaging in a conversation with them um, that's non sports related if you don't like sports or finding that connection do you find that there's a difference in networking with men versus women actually they answer <laughs> what, do you, what do you think Who said I'm sure? <laughs> I think sometimes. Okay. I think it depends on the situation. Um, because you can have really good friends that are guys, and you can network with them just the same way you would net network with your girlfriends. Um, but, you know, in different situations, you may have to network a bit differently. Um, depend. It just depends, you know, if, if you're in what kind of environment you're in at work. It can be difficult at times when you're the only woman in the room, and so you are trying to network and make connections with these men, and 
it takes time. It's not something that you can just break that ice right away normally, unless you know football or something, but <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I mean, but knowing what, what to connect with and how to connect with them, I, yeah, I do kind of approach it differently depending upon the situation. If I have a really good relationship with somebody, it's no different, if I'm, you know, men or women, but if I'm not really close to that person yet, yeah, I may approach it a little differently because you don't want to come off as like you're trying to make a move on somebody either, you know what I mean? Like, so you have to be careful or, you know, mislead somebody that they'll think that you're, you know, hitting on them or something, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's very different for me, at least for me, so. Yes. I have found that one of the easiest ways to break the ice with when networking with men is compliment their tie. Oh, okay. It, it's very, it's safe. Mm -hmm. And say, oh, that's a really nice tie. Mm -hmm. And they they relax and they make it easy to talk. They make it easier to talk. Fantastic, great idea. Yeah. Thank you. If you want to break the ice when you walk into a room full of men, you sit down and you say, for peace sake, I feel like I'm in the locker room of the YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody laughs and it's like, okay, let's get from That's great. We need to. I'm the controller for the county. Can you tell I'm controlling? Ah. <laughs> but very pleasantly controlled. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Another hand? Yes. yes. A big voice and um, I use that um, every every guy at Penske is at least six feet tall just about except one but it's, it's so true most of them are at least six feet six, six feet tall and so when I'm going into I'm usually the only female and you know when I go to these meetings it's a matter of having my voice be heard and so that's you know how I kind of compensate for my lack of, uh, you know, height there. So it's one of those things we have to overcome. Uh, my name's Lisa, and I have an addition to the the uh, men and women how we network question, and that is I learned this a couple of years ago from a fella. I belong to the American Businesswoman's Association, and he was the only guy that ever came to our meetings, and he joined, and we we were allowed to allow him in. And I said, you know, Harry. Why, why do you like being here? This is the American Business Women's Association. And he said, women network very differently than men, in his opinion. And I said, what is that? He said, you guys are relational, we are more transactional. And I said, what do you mean by that? Now, he was in sales, uh, so um, I, I forget what kind of sales. But he said, guys are all about, let's talk to get to sale, where girls are more, let's talk to get to know each other, building relationships. I thought that was so interesting. And, and I can see that being ac absolutely accurate, right? Absolutely. Thank you very much. So we have a, a little bit of time to uh, do a couple of more questions. Yes, okay, go ahead. I was just gonna ask the panel, um, as you meet people and you're networking, do you um, find anything with generational issues? You know, there's a lot of 20-somethings that now have higher positions you know, where some of us coming back into the work field in our 40s or 50s, you know, now you're talking to someone who is your son's <clears throat> age or daughter's age, and the connections that we can do on most things sometimes are not generational with the Xers or the millennials, and I was just kind of curious on your take on that. Well, I, for me, I have that issue at work, and I just had to find the common ground with like the one lady in my department who's slightly older than I am is to find the common ground 
and I've known it for me if I let people know I'm not here to take your job like I have my own goals and ambitions it seems to work better if we have that face to face up front like this is what I want to do and what you're doing really doesn't matter it's like it's not part of my plan so I've noticed for me when I'm dealing with a slightly older person that if I make that information clear there hasn't been myself, um, that's an excellent question. Um, being in IT, I see that dynamic um, play out because the older generations, and I please don't take offense, many people don't really want to learn the newest technology and they don't want to, some do, okay, I'm not saying everybody, but you know, it can be more difficult to get people to come on board with something new that we're trying to implement for the organization so you have to make an extra effort to explain to them why this is going to benefit them and why this is so good for them and what it's going to do for them and sort of sell it whereas a younger person um, who has technology every day is growing up with technology isn't necessarily afraid of technology and I'm an older person, so I mean, please don't take offense to any of us. But, um, you know, they're, they're a lot more quickly going to grasp on and understand what your goals are and what you're trying to do. So you can approach them in a different way um, and, and break those barriers down. But I do think that, especially when it comes to technology, I've seen that where there are people who are resistant to learning it because I've always done it this way. And I really only have 10 more years to I retire. Do I really need to change what I'm doing? You know, those kinds of things. And you have to overcome that. Well, this will save you so much time. You're going to have extra time, you know. And, but, you know, making those connections and giving people a reason sometimes is, is different. And, and I think they communicate. Generations or different generations communicate differently, um, especially with the younger generation going to be on Facebook and Twitter, you're going to be posting things, you're not going to be, they don't necessarily call each other and spend an hour on the phone, they'll be posting everything online, whereas people from my generation, I can say this to the new generation, you know, we'll talk on the phone or we'll get together in person and we'll spend the time together, so it's a different way that you relate to each other and the comfort, you know, is different. I saw this really, really neat video a few months ago. And I'll just share it with you real quick because I it I thought it was profound. It was called Look Up. If you ever want to go out to YouTube and just search for Look Up, okay, Look Up, all right. There was a man and a woman, and they both had their cell phones and they were like this, okay. And they walked right by each other and never saw each other, okay. Then they showed the same video where they're actually made eye contact. They became friends and they wound up getting married. But that relationship was missed because they wouldn't look up from their phones um, to to make that connection with another human being. I'm like, wow, that's really good. I, I'm a geek. I have my phone right here, you know. But but yet to remind you that you know, hey, it's important to make that contact. So I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, that's good feedback. Excellent. Yes. Can I just say one more thing? I'm still arguing. <laughs> if you want to get networking and you want to start making contact, volunteer. Mm -hmm. If you volunteer, you will find people with like interest to yours and you will get to know each other around a common bond. Mm -hmm. And you will continue to spread out as you go through the community, volunteer for boards of directors, volunteer for anything that comes along that interests you because that's where you're going to find other people that believe in what you're doing and you believe in what they're doing. And there's no better way than that to start to get together with a whole bunch of people in the community. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the volunteer manager for United Way. <laughs> <laughs> I go out 
to network, I'm usually looking for people to meet and encourage to volunteer. Where's the 20 bucks? Seriously, I'm not kidding. You know, perfect. But yeah, I'm usually the opposite. I'm looking to meet people to bring them into volunteering uh -huh. and you know, towards an agency. So it does. It's great. It works both ways. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we have about one more minute. And, and so I wanted to just touch on one uh, more question. It's kind of twofold. How do you insert yourself into a networking opportunity? Say you have a group of individuals, and how do you get away from the clinger? that attaches themselves to you. So, you know, we've all been at networking events where, you know, there's a group of people standing around and you want to meet that one person. How do you not rudely or abruptly interrupt and, and get um, some, some face time with that person? And then conversely, when you're ready to get rid of that person or move on, mm. how do you excuse yourself politely? You know, some people just don't let you go. So, any input on, on that? <laughs> Yes, Regina. Absolutely. I know she was in my office telling me about it anymore. So yes. Um, I could do the how you get away. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll let them speak to the how do you insert. So when I was demonstrating my I normally do a breakaway where you tell someone it was nice to meet you, I'll get your contact information and I'll contact you later and then leave. Like you're literally are gonna have to remove yourself from where that person is. To, to actually get away. So my, I normally just do the breakaway, get their information, say it was nice to meet you, I look forward to seeing you again, and then break away. That's the nicest, light way to kind of get out of the situation. And Regina will let you know, she, she does not mince words. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any other suggestions or recommendations? Tell that them you're, that you're holding them up. I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on them, right? Yeah. Say, boy, I'm holding you up. I'll see you later. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like that. Good. Is it, I see. I've been taught. Well, I read a lot. I read a lot about networking. So I do a lot of networking. So what I've read is the best thing to do is to say, "It was so pleasant to meet you today." I, I want to meet other people. I'm sure there's plenty of other people here that you would like to meet also. Like put it on them, like, like make it be a courtesy to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, very nice. That's a very pleasant way. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, it doesn't make you feel. Yeah. Any, any other input? Or? I, I, you know, I mean, in general, just if I want to break into a group, I do just walk up. And, <laughs> I, 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 sorry, I just wanted to, I really, I was really interested in meeting you, and I wanted to introduce myself to you today, you know, I'm Andy, and, you know, I mean, unless, unless it's two people having gossip sessions, but usually you can kind of recognize if it's, you know, a bunch of people having a, you know, more of a networking type conversation, and you can, you know, politely say, excuse me, I just wanted to come in and introduce myself and, and meet you tonight, and, Learn more from you. Great. Thank you. There is a fantastic, how many of you have read the book, uh, How to Work a Room? Has anyone read that? It's a fantastic, you have? Susan Rowan. Um, it's a fantastic book uh, that really talks all about networking in all types of situations, everything that we talked here, talked about here, and more. Um, so I encourage you if you want to, you know, get a little more insight on it, get you know, get some practice. It really makes you think about all of those things that and opportunities that we perhaps have missed. So um, you know, I encourage you to take a look at that. We do um, need to fall into our next segment in order to stay on time. Um, but if you could please give these ladies a round of applause for sharing the insights with you. What I'm passing around now, we're going to work on an opportunity to um, to create your, if you can just pass them back, it might be a little easier backwards. Um, to work on an elevator speech. And what I'm passing out is just some thoughts that I had for you know networking. A lot of these things you've said throughout the day, um, or throughout this, this first this uh, minutes, this session. Okay. Okay. 
And if you'll follow along with me on the second page, just open up to the second page there. Second page, you have some do's and don'ts of networking. Oh, I'm sorry. And I really believe that what I can bring from this message is to help other paths to business. Again, please give a round of applause. Um, Andy has to get to the cross practice. All right. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in a couple of minutes. See you My daughter's playing lacrosse for the first time. I've never seen a lacrosse game. I have no idea what she looks like or anything. And when she said she wanted to do it, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> then I went to buy the lacrosse stick. I'm like, are you sure you really want it? <laughs> See ya. All right, so on the second page, you have um, some do's and don'ts of networking. Very big, uh, you know, nothing that's, that's uh, you know, earth shattering or that perhaps you haven't got it, but things that you want to do. Obviously, you want to be yourself. We talked about that. You want to have a goal in mind. So when you go into a networking event or you know that you're, your purpose is to network, what are you trying to accomplish? What do you want to get? Who do you want to meet? Those are some important things for you to think about. We heard ask open-ended questions. You know, you don't want to give that person an opportunity to shut you down. So <laughs> 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 